Hello everyone and welcome! Welcome to a long-awaited video. I put out a little promo for this thing last week. Uh, we had a cool little event in the Try Hack Me Discord. We're having a little uh, designing dungeons conversation with the little creator here. Uh, so this is it. Here we are. We're doing the Year of the Jellyfish Room on Try Hack Me. So I am... Uh, <laughs> Not expecting this to go all that well. Uh, I'm gonna, gonna fall down a lot of rabbit holes. I'm gonna bang my head against the wall for a little bit. And it's all bundled up in a video for you to enjoy watching my suffering. So here we go. I'll get to my computer screen here. This is it. I am in Try Hack Me. I'm on the website and I'm opened up the Year of the Jellyfish room. So uh, Year of the Jellyfish is part of an OSCP voucher giveaway which is generously donated by Fawaz. If you root the box before 6 p.m. UTC on the 30th of April, 2021, you'll be entered into the prize drawing. The chosen will be, the winner will be chosen by raffle at that time, streamed and announced on the Trihack Me Discord server. So you got to jump into the Trihack Me Discord server uh, and uh, see what's going down. See all the memes, <laughs> see all the laughter, see all the gifs, and uh, maybe ask for some help if you're, if you're playing this, if you're working through it, but no worries at all. This is all for fun. We're all here to learn, right? So that's, that's the stakes though. Everyone's been having a lot of fun for uh, some, some Try Hack Me giveaway here for OSCP voucher. A couple notes though, this box deploys with a public IP address. So think about what that means for how you should approach this challenge. Internet service providers are often unhappy. <laughs> It's very generous of you. Uh, they're often unhappy if you enumerate public IP addresses at a high speed. Mm. Okay. Uh, it goes without saying, any signs of cheating will result in an immediate and permanent ban, both from both the competition and from the site and TriHackMe community. Oof. Oof. Can we get an F in the chat, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Uh, and of course, don't stream or release write-ups for this blog until after a week has gone past. Uh, we should be in the clear. We should be good to uh, to do this thing, Hal, because, you know, the time has elapsed. So let's do it. I've got the machine started up. i got my little P address here. And uh, I guess let's do this thing. I don't, I don't know what, I don't even know what I'm getting myself into. So i got a terminal. I'm uh, connected to the VPN, which I apparently don't even have to be. So Year of the Jellyfish, also known as Yacht JF. Or Yachif. Let's get a README going because I'm sure I'll have a lot of stupid ideas that I'll probably want to keep track of. That's large text. Year of the Jellyfish. If you guys don't know, obviously, I'm going to be a little more rambunctious. I'm going to be a little bit more crazy. I'm going to be a little bit more John Hammond than usual. Um, because if this is going to be a raw video where I'm just diving in. April, what day is it today? 28th is the day I'm recording. 2021. Let's get the IP address in here. And let's start the show. Uh, I'll make a directory for Nmap. And you know what? My ISC might get angry. My ISP, my internet service provider might get angry at me if I uh, were to scan this box. But that's a risk I am willing to take. What is that line? Is that like from Shrek? It's uh, Lord Farquaad where he's like, that is some of you may die. <laughs> that is a risk I am willing to take. 21 FTP, 443 HTTPS, port 80 for a classic web server HTTP, 22 for SSH, discovered port 8000. Um, what else we got? We got anything else? A little AWS instance here, it looks like. And now it looks like it, those are all the ports that it found. Are there... I'm I'm <laughs> I'm skeptical because like I know Murray Merlin Oracle the one that puts it together is gonna throw some curveballs in here, so maybe there are some other ports to scan. Uh, I'm gonna stop that uh, Nmap scripting engine and just go kind of all out, and we don't need those things anymore. And let's throw it into like an all ports file. But let's go all ports. Uh, and I guess let's do it, I guess. Risky business screaming out across the internet. Uh, what's the IP address? Do I still have that here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So it's going to redirect me to HTTPS, right? So uh, I'm going to assume... Oh, wait, it obviously needs a domain name, of course. Duh. I, I'm saying HTTPS because we saw port 443, but it looks like it needs a kind of name entry for Robin's Pet Shop dot thm okay 
Uh, let me start another little terminal boy. And I will... Discovered port. Two, 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 two. Add this into nano. Add this into it. Set row hosts with nano. Um, oh, shoot. What was the IP address? Paste that in. Ta-da. Now, going to the web page. Certificate warrants. Okay, and that's totally fine. Probably like a self-signed certificate. Totally cool. Take me there anyway. Living on the edge. Welcome to Robin's Pet Shop. I should take a look at that certificate though. Um, so I'm going to click up here. Connection to the site is not secure. Can I see the certificate? Why can't I zoom in on that? I want to make that bigger. I want to make it so the people can see it. Gosh, details. Let's see what we got here. Hopefully your eyes can like squint on that. I'm just gonna scroll through here. Um, whatever information might be present in this certificate. In case there's any new information that would be worthwhile, like other domains. Oh, in fact, yes. Certificate subject alternative name. I wonder if Nmap would have actually carved that out in my Nmap initial. <laughs> it didn't write it because I quit the program. Great. All right. So we have monitor, beta, and dev as some subdomains in here. Let's keep track of that, I suppose. And then let's also grab all of these to uh, be put on other lines uh, and, and add them into our et cetera host file. Someone yelled at me. Someone was in the in the stream chat last time. It was like, John, you know, you can just kind of put them all on the exact same line in et cetera host. I'm like, you're right. You know, <laughs> fine. <laughs> and that works, right? Spaces. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Let's just, let's just grab one and then ping it. Yeah. Okay. It gets the IP just fine. Ping is not going to want to respond though. So that's fine. So now we have some other subdomains we can take a look at. But first, let's dive into Robin's Pet Shop. It's the best pet shop in Bristol. We have the happiest collection of animals for sale. Be it a cute little guinea pig, a puppy, an adorable bunny rabbit, or your first goldfish, we have a pet for you. <laughs> this is a big goldfish now. I zoomed in a lot. He looks kind of sad, not going to lie. He looks a little... <laughs> he looks like he's not all that happy to be here. Fred the goldfish... Honey the Beagle Puppy, and Credence the Chameleon. Oh, there are a lot of these. You can you can get a giraffe. Does anyone does anyone have a giraffe? An alligator. Please don't ask. But please send help. <laughs> I'm having fun already. As you can see, we have a wide array of pets available. Be warned, some may come with unexpected medical expenses. Goldfish bites. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the that's the least of our worries here. Come and visit us at any time. I clicked the link. Did it lose? Did I Did I just can is my nmap did my nmap scan kill it? <laughs> did my nmap scan kill it? No. <laughs> you know, I learned my lesson. We learn our lesson real quick. Do I what? Do I just wait it out or reset the box or get a different IP address? All right, we're off the races bright and early. Uh, let's revert the box. <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, just I'm gonna do that. Not a big deal. And we'll wait for that to happen and I'll switch out the IP addresses in my et cetera host. Okay, we got a new IP address. Uh, a new box is up. So let's switch out that in the et cetera host file. And let's hope that that will behave a little bit better for us. I, I probably should have read the instructions, you know, like, I mean, I did, but I just kind of totally ignored. So I learned my lesson. <laughs> Connection's not private. Yep. Redirected me just fine. Let's go. 
All right, let's not send a mass and map scan across all ports now. Did we even get anything from that, honestly? We saw a new 22222, but what is on this page? Is there anything worthwhile other than these animals? The contact page, feel free to contact us anytime. There's an email address. Are there any, is there anything like hidden in these web pages? I'm just gonna quickly view source. I'm just gonna quickly control you to see if there's any hidden things. I see an assets page, so we can go visit Fred the goldfish personally. Assets, pets, oh, okay, some directory indexing. How about an assets? Just pets. Anything else? We could do like Nito and Go Buster, but then we just run into the exact same problem. So I could switch to like some VPS or something maybe. Um, but if there's nothing else immediately as a telltale on this site, then I want to go look at some of the other ports. Um, we knew that FTP was a thing. I don't think I have anything out of the Nmap files. Yeah, all ports and initial are, are gone. So what did we, we, we saw, and I mean, we can do this again, but we saw 21, we saw 80, 443. We also saw an 8,000, uh, obviously 22, um, and a 22222. Oh, and we can check out these other domain names too. Let's, I want to see the FTP real quick, just to, I don't know, spot check that in case it's like a dummy anonymous login. I doubt it. And it's also, this is an up-to-date version of VSFTPD. So probably don't have the users. We could just try a simple FTP username. Again, empty no pass, but I don't think, yeah, that's not, that's not gonna get anywhere. Okay, maybe that'll come in handy later. Uh, 80 and 443, SSH, we don't know any usernames. What's on port 8000? Oh, that's still using HTTPS, so let's try and switch that to HTTP. The site is under development. Please be patient if you've been given a specific ID to use it. Uh, an ID? I haven't been given an ID. How do I get an ID? Anything. Nope. Please subscribe. Nope. No one's handing out any favors. I want a box where there's, <laughs> please subscribe is like a necessary part of the box. It's like a password or a key or something. Um, What is on this quad two thing? Or quint, I guess is it? Cause we're, wait, this is six. <laughs> That's sick. What? Yeah. How did that happen? No, I'm sure it was, I'm sure I just typed it wrong. SSH, not gonna be that helpful. Let's look at these other domain names. Let's look at these other subdomains. Um, Deb sounds kind of good, not gonna lie. Uh, is there gonna be like any development files? Oh, it redirects me to HTTPS again. Totally fine. Um, that brings me to the exact same page. Okay. What about beta? Does that bring me to a specific beta fish? <laughs> beta. Yep. Take me there, please. Oh, it just brings me to 8,000 again. That's not helpful. What was that last one? Monitor. Monitor R. Let's go to that. Okay. Take me there. Ooh. Ooh. What the heck is this thing? Pet shop is online. Took me to localhost. That was weird. Jellyfish, Jellyfin is on 8096. I just see the tooltip down there. Is that a thing? Is that a real port? 8096? I didn't see that from Nmap. Not that Nmap was really all that useful considering it broke everything. Jellyfin, what is this? I don't know a username or password. What is Jellyfin? There's a server ID. That's not something that I could use on like port 
8,000, is it? I'm really, really doubting that. But I'm just going to try it. Nope. Okay. Monitor. I can turn on and off. Is this like a thing? Oh, it is. Made for the community. It's like an open source thing. What does it do? Nothing else in here. Just a lot of JavaScript. Seemingly to do like the actual display. What is this? Monitor is a web front to live display the status of any web app or service. If updating to version 1.7 from any previous version before updating backup. Mm. Screenshots, very cool, very slick. Wow. Oh, it's PHP? Is there something we could take advantage of there? Are there any like issues, known issues? Like security things, like things that I can exploit maybe? <laughs> A lot, of, a lot of feature requests. Um, security. Security advisors, nothing new. The thing had a version number on it though, didn't it? Yeah, monitor 1.7.6. Are there any change logs in here? 1.7.6M. This is 1.77D back in 2018. So this might be old. Yeah. Okay, so this is the version 1.7.6. Are there like exploits? You know what? I should just I should just check search exploit, which I do have in my which I do have in my path here. So I'm going to search exploit monitor. Yeah. Uh, authorization bypass and remote code execution unauthenticated. That sounds kind of nice. What do I do with this thing? Uh, let me take a look at both of these. Search exploit. I'll just use tag X to display that out. Uh, let's use tag M because I want to get my syntax highlighting, please. Just bring the, bring the file over here and we'll open it up in Sublime Text. Authorization bypass. Specify parameters in a format. Python target URL user login user. Oh, so we, wait, how's an authorization bypass if it takes in a user password and stuff? Allows creation of administrative accounts by abusing the installation URL. Is that URL like still a thing? Assets configure. Let me go there. That slash assets config installation register. Not a thing. I don't know if that'll work, my guy. Yeah. So you could like create a user, but that's not going to help us. I don't think in this one because that it just genuinely doesn't have that that PHP file right now. There's a link here. What does this other one do? Remote code execution unauthenticated, which is good because I do not have an account. Let's bring that down, 48980. This is the exact same one. Is it not? What? What did it? What did I just, no, oh, there's a difference. They, they looked very similar. I was, I was a little weirded out. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean for that to just be complete nonsense. I, they looked almost identical. Remote code execution unauthenticated. Um, it needs a target URL and L host and L port. So it calls back to me. Yep. It tries to go to assets php upload.php. Does that location exist? It does. It gets like errors. Okay. 
data user image. Is that a thing? It's going up a directory, so it's not in PHP anymore. It's data user image. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. So this, this file exists. There's nothing to it. I'm sure it's going to be processed server side, right? Because it's PHP. So headers. These look pretty fine. Can I like pretty print this or something so I can see what those headers are actually doing? I don't really care that much, but this is kind of hard. This is kind of annoying to try and make sense of and read. Uh, yeah. Whatever. This is totally unnecessary. I just kind of wanted to be able to see a little bit better. And data is a street straight up mess, but it is uploading a file shell.php with an underscore in the mix image type gif god fuck you know what word wrap where are you at my man okay it includes a gif header and then a php exec bin bash calling back to an ip address yeah okay a shell script should be uploaded now we try and execute it i mean that file exists, so maybe that one has maybe that one's worth a try. I'm gonna move that to 890.py uh, exploit.py. How about that? Python 3 exploit.py? And I need a target URL and L host and L port. Oh, this this machine is on the internet. So I will probably need to either use my VPS like a virtual private server or use ngrok. Um, let's use quad eight and then I'm going to, I'm going to use ngrok if that's totally cool. ngrok TCP quad eight. Good. And now I have this IP address in port. So if I just for kicks, just to verify sanity check, if I were to try and netcat to that, I do see that connection come back. So ngrok should be behaving for me. Yeah. So when I run this exploit, I need the target URL, which I'm assuming is just going to be the root of monitor, just like this. And checking out the exploit again, it actually, yeah. Does it add, it adds a forward slash. So I don't want that trailing forward slash there. And then, oh, it needs the space for the port. So if I try and run this. Oh, 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 oh. it's getting an SSL error because of the certificate. So we make a post request and a get request so we can just tell them to totally ignore the certificate. Uh, verify should equal false. Don't bother verifying the certificate. I know this is just a fake internet game. So it's not real. Nothing is real. Uh, why is it still dying? Oh, uh, I need to be writing the exploit scripts. I just accidentally saved a copy of my old 48908 whatever those numbers were. So now verify, verify is false. Uh, trying that command again. Uh, shell script should be uploaded. Now we try to execute it. It's warning about the certificate. That's totally fine. Mm, no. Can I like proxy that or something? To like see what the response is? I mean, I guess I can like view the page. Is it in, is there, is there a... Is there a file created though? Data user image. No, no, no. Data user image. No, no new files. Um, it tries to 
get the page, but I, I want to view the response as we try and print it, as, as we try and upload it or post it, right? So that's the post request. If we do print r.text, we can see the response. And <laughs> you are an exploit. How did you know? <laughs> My user agent is that. My user agent like isn't Python. How does it? If I post to it, oh, stupid stinking certificate, you are an exploit. That's just curl. I didn't set a user agent there. Is there like something going on, like tracking me? Oh, there's a cookie. There's an is human cookie and it's set to one. <laughs> I am human. I am. I know you people don't want to believe me. I see all the, I see your comments. Is human, that should be one. Um, and then let's supply that along with it. I'll grab that same syntax for the get request. And now, how do we look? It didn't. It didn't give me that you are an exploit error, but it says it's still not something that it wants to upload. Um, what page was that? It didn't put it there, did it? No. Is there like some weird stuff going on? Like, Will, will you upload a GIF, quote unquote, like genuinely a GIF if I add that GIF extension? Um, I'm going to try and download it. So we have to we have to switch it in that path as well. Go back to my Python. It uploaded. Oh. That uploaded. Yeah. So that uploaded, but it's not very helpful to me because it's not running, it's not going to execute PHP. Um, does it, is it like checking if the, the presence of a file extension is there or like if it has a GIF in it? What is this, what is this server doing that might, um, no. That one failed. What is the server doing to try and limit and constrain what I could send it or what I could give it? Like, is there filter evasions? Is there some some like blacklist for data that I have to send it? GIF.php. Can it work with like other, like PHP 3 maybe? No. GIF.php 3 is not an image or exceeds. So that one failed just as well. Let's try like PHTML. Will that work? Ooh, 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 ooh. Shell gif.phtml is an image file uploaded. We requested it, but we didn't get a callback. It exists. Is my tunnel still like happening? I wanna see if it gets the callback. Click on it. What is happening? <laughs> Page isn't loading for me. I mean, it's probably like trying to call back, but. Does it not like the ngrok? Let's try without the ngrok. Um, let me just get to like a server that I can control. Uh. 
Uh, let's get into shared memory and listen on Claude 9. Oh, sorry, I need Netcat. Now, when we try this connection, please call back to John Hammond on Claude 9. That should request the page. Is it going to want... Does it need to be like a... Like a stupid... Like real port? That's obviously not stupid. That's genuine. Does it need to be something that like would actually probably allow outbound outbound traffic? Like I'll, I'll listen on port 443. Ah! Oh, it's running a website. That makes complete sense. Let me... Maybe that was what was wrong when I tried to use Ngrok. Let's just for the funds, let's see if we can get Pwncat in here. That might be good. And everyone can whine and complain because every time they see Pwncat, it's doing horrific things. <laughs> but sometimes it's nice, you know? Let's listen on 443. Uh, can I pseudo that? Will it let me? Ugh. Gosh, that's gonna be... That's gonna suck. Alright, screw it. No... No pwn cat. Pseudo net cat tag LMVP 443. Yeah. Now, ngrok that please... ngrok that... Yeah. So now I am 6.tcp.ngrok.io11559. Send that in. No shell. But it uploaded. What are the contents of this file? Now it's going to try and request it and it's going to be hell. Uh, let's get to the VPS one more time. I'm going to sudo netcat tech lnvp 443. That's already running. Uh, I don't care. Everything, please die. Okay. Um, let's try that now. What's going on? Oh! No, no, no. That's just random people scanning my computer. <laughs> That's just genuine traffic from bad actors. <laughs> Dang it. Oh. Oh, it wasn't uploaded because it already exists. No, it didn't make any changes because it already exists. I should have read the error message. Um... Import random, please. Import string. So let's say file name can go ahead and equal like uh, random dot choice of string dot ASCII lowercase for under thing in range of random dot randint, I think five to 12, that's totally fine. So let's all put that together and then let's make the data go ahead and define that as the file name with an F string. So that's pulled in and let's do the exact same thing over in the URL that we request. 
So, oh, and I never even requested that stinking extra HTML thing. The other, the other like little file extension here. It was never going to do anything. Gosh. All right. So what I did is I just hot patched the script to use a random file name each time rather than that constant one because it was going to end up trying to override itself and it wouldn't let it. So now it just has a random script name and it will hopefully actually get the same file that we've uploaded to request it. So I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, darn it. How much time do we waste on that? Um, well, here we are <laughs> with my random file name. That's a good one. Ogwibix, sort of, however you want to read that. I am just dub 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 data, though. And I want to make this a stable shell. So, oh, sorry. Do I actually have Python? Which Python, please? Nope. Which Python 3? I do have Python 3. Python 3, uh, taxi, import, PTY. Gosh, I hate unstable shell shells so much. And you're not going to be able to see this because I can't clear my screen. Import PTY, PTY.spawn, arrow keys, bin bash, close parentheses, do it, control Z, STTY, raw, minus, echo, FG, hit enter a few times, export, term, equals X term. So now I have a manually stable shell, sort of. Are we in a Docker container or anything? No. Um, what can I do? What home directories are there? Robin. Oh, sorry. That's a directory. She has nothing in her home directory. Where is this flag that I'm supposed to submit? Is there one? Flag one. Where is that? Jellyfin. Um, Robin McKenzie. She doesn't have a flag. What's in dub dub dub? Flag one. Let's do it. A hey. one down. Cool. Hey, I've got a streak. <laughs> One flag submission. I'm truly sorry. I'm truly sorry. Um, now we need a privesk. Can we get into Robin? Well, she has nothing in her home directory. Uh, we could run like linpeas to enumerate. We could try to do some stuff manually, but uploading something is kind of going to be a pain. God, I so so I so so wish Punkat would work well for me because it's just so much easier like i could updog stuff but i guess we could do that i guess we can updog stuff let me copy um a rendition of oh lin peas over here and let's try and updog that in this current directory so that I can ngrok TCP 9090, or I guess that should be, I mean, that would be HTTP on 9090. Well, let me do that, seemingly. Okay. Do I have things to actually access those? Do I have curl? I do. All right, let's get to dev SHM. Curl that on port, what port? Oh, it doesn't have a port, seemingly. Can I download linpeas.sh? Uh, just throw it into linpeas. 
dot sh, I guess. Because curl will go ahead and put it on center now, but I mean it got it. You know what? You can't complain. Okay. Let's see how we do. I don't know if he'll be able to find anything, but it's kind of worthwhile to run. And we can gonna go about and do our manual enumeration if need be. Um What do we got? It is a virtual machine. That makes sense. <laughs> pseudo version. Is that an old pseudo version? I feel like that's the, I feel like that's the one that, did that get patched? I don't know. Useful software, LXC. Are there like, LXC and LXD containers going around. I'm not in that group. I'm just dub 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 data. I'm a real low privilege user right now, so I don't think I'll be able to do a whole lot. Unless there's anything that like egregiously stands out. You're like, oh yeah, FTP's running. You could dump credentials if you were root, but I'm not root. Hmm. Socket. Snap D on by root. I don't usually see that. That's that's not something I typically see. With like Linpy's output. It's not really all that useful. It's like an error message, but that's weird. And that's all it got of Linpy's. <laughs> okay, I guess that's all we're going to get. I, that's weird to me. I want to look into that. I'm opening up Firefox now. Okay, thanks. I guess. If you load the page. Ah. Socket files. For snap, though. That's a snap. I know it's not like anything that's immediately useful because it's just an error message, but it's still really weird to me. What else could we do? Um, we could do like, we could go through got milk's privilege escalation since we don't really have anything out of um, Linpy's. And maybe Pwncat would be able to track stuff down. But again, we'd have to have that working. Applications and services. What applications are installed? That might be fine. Ah! That just read it all out in bin and user bin. But Linpy's would have found that. What about dpackage? Snap, of course. Um, this is a lot of libraries. Okay, okay, we're in lib land. I don't like it. And that's it. It has the version, though. That sock thing is still throwing me off. The socket thing, like with Snap, part of me wonders if that's a thing. I've never seen that in Linpeas before, but it's not like it didn't know what to do with it. What is Snap? I mean, obviously I know what Snap is, but what's that version number? Is that a thing? Let me uh, search exploit Snap. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 search point snap. And that version number 2.3, 2.5 is less than the one that's dirty sock. Oh, like I always, I've always, I've never actually done like a dirty sock exploit thing. I, I've known it through, I mean, it just sounds so similar enough through dirty cow. And obviously this was kind of a big thing when it was kind of found out. I remember it being in the news and all. Um, search exploit tech X on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. January 2019. 
and the version number is lower, so this thing should be vulnerable. Create an account at the Ubuntu SSO? Is that for real? Version two. There's a lot in this. What about this one? What's the difference between that one and this one? Uh, let me copy that down. Search exploit tech M four six, please. Oh, this is the dirty sock version too. Oh, it has the snap like pre-created. And it installs it. Snap dot snap. Oh. That must be why this box needs to be a public. So it could actually like reach out if it does need to get stuff from like the Ubuntu like library. Is that am I understanding that right? What is this post to? Huh. Let's do it. Let's sing and do it. Um, let's get back to the victim. Um, I guess I could download that since it has now been, it's put in the location that I'm serving with Updog. And it's that 46232 and let's just move that to dirtysock.py, yeah. And let's try and download that. Cool, got it, ls. I guess let's do Python 3 dirty sock. Has to sleep for five seconds. Has to sleep for eight seconds. Snoozing. <laughs> Come on. The suspense is killing me. Okay. So I can SU to dirty sock. With the password dirty sock. I'm dirty sock. Is that root? Oh. No, but I can sudo. Do I need a password? I know the password. Oh. <laughs> That's cool. That's super slick. Dunzo. Dunzo. I like that one. I'll be honest, I haven't done dirty sock before and I and I need to google that and look into it a little bit. But that is that. That's a good box. Um I'm sure like like if uh if those other subdomains uh, had other stuff in them, I would have fallen down that rabbit hole for a long long time. Um but I felt like between monitor having those um having those immediate version numbers that you could look up and and check through searchploit, that was good to kind of keep me moving. And the the privilege escalation, I feel like I I feel like I cheesed that because like what Lin Pease did, which like wasn't a, which wasn't a, a specific message like, Hey, this is vulnerable. This is exploitable, but it just gave me that weird error. And I was like, I feel like I've never seen that before. I feel like I don't, I don't normally notice that with socket files, especially from snap. So I don't know why, but that like triggered me and I, and I started thinking about it. So I just kind of wanted to look at it just a bit more, but Going through Got Milk's Privilege Escalation Guide is certainly a good thing to do. Uh, if you don't have anything with LinPs or if you want to try other enumeration scripts, I don't know if uh, like smart lin enum or whatever xyz.py file that you can use for other automated detection for privilege escalation. But 
it, 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 it surprising to me that Lin Pease didn't actually like trigger and see that on its own. Maybe that's something that we could, I don't know, have better detection for when we're starting to script this or do this a little bit. Um, I don't think that was too awful. I don't think, like I didn't spend an insane amount of time on this. That's it, though. <laughs> cool. All right. Um, this was a lot of fun. Thank you, Murray. Thank you, Merlin Oracle, for this box. This was very fun and very slick. I really enjoyed the goldfish and everything else in the in Robin's pet shop. Uh, I don't know. I, maybe if Robin had a little bit more, if there were other users. This was cool. This was a lot of fun. So how many people have solved this at this point? Does it say? 2,000 users are in this. Just about. So jump in the Discord. Are there write-ups available? Just the one by Murray. Oh, and that. I mean, it says, hey, don't share write-ups until after it, but... Nice. This was cool. This was fun. I don't even know what Jellyfin was there for. <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, we went in a lot of different places. We, we tried to look under every stone while we could, but that was fun. That was good. And I enjoyed it. I hope, I hope you did as well. I hope I didn't stumble or go back and forth too much. Um, I was cool to see dirty sock. So I think that's it. I think that's the end of the video. I think we did it. Thank you so much for watching everybody. Thanks so much for hanging out. Um, Hey, I hope you enjoyed this sort of thing. We had a, a kind of a cool conversation between Murray and I in the TriHackMe Discord about designing dungeons and how making this activity, making exercises, trying to create security training like that. I don't know. It takes a lot of thought. Like exploiting and taking advantage of breaking stuff is one thing, but when you're trying to build it and when you're trying to make the environment that you have a, a structured playthrough of, of how you want folks to get through the the room or the machine or the challenge that's a whole nother that's a whole nother ball game it's a whole nother can of worms so absolute credit goes to uh merlin oracle and of course serious props to fawaz for being willing to donate an oscp voucher uh but the way to do that the way to get in the way to party is to be in the try hack me discord uh so if you aren't in there already please do jump in you can see who won this thing you can see if you won this thing if you solved it and there's a lot of great shenanigans going on so it's all part about it's all part of being part of the community so that's it thanks for watching this video everybody thanks so much for hanging out with me i hope it was fun uh, I'll see you in the chat as we're going through this live. I'll see you in the comments. Love if you could like the video, please. Maybe press that subscribe button. I'd be super appreciative. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.